Dumbledore's army was a prominent part of the fifth book, and during that time, Harry was always the leader of the crew. He taught a whole handful of kids defensive and offensive spells to ensure their safety now that dark times were upon them. They were of course caught by Umbridge though, and were forced to shut down. The following year during the sixth book, there were two members of the DA that wanted it to start up again, because for Neville and Luna, that was a place for them to come into their own, have friends, and feel accepted in a safe place. While on the train going to Hogwarts, they asked Harry about it, but Harry disappointed them, saying that there was no need for it now that Umbridge was gone and now that they would have an actual defense against the Dark Arts teacher. Even though there were no meetings, Neville and Luna held on to their coins that Hermione had made, which were previously used to send messages to the group to tell them when to meet. They held on to these coins, hoping that a message would show up for another meeting. But toward the end of the year, they got a message that was much darker than they had anticipated. Hermione sent a message through the coin, saying that they needed help. And because Neville and Luna were the only ones that checked their coins regularly, they were the only ones who showed up to help in the Battle of the Astronomy Tower. They fought Death Eaters in a serious battle where multiple people got hurt. In the aftermath of the battle, it was revealed to everybody that Dumbledore had died. And because of this, Harry knew that he had to complete Dumbledore's mission, meaning he could not return for a seventh year. Ron and Hermione of course joined him, and the three of them left Hogwarts and all of the DA behind. Snape took over as headmaster of Hogwarts, and the Cairo siblings, who were two Death Eaters, were brought in as professors, and Hogwarts was no longer safe. There's a scene in the film that wasn't in the book, but I feel I should add it because it was a good addition. We see Neville stand up to Death Eaters on the train who were looking for Harry, showing that Neville was a changed man and is no longer the scared little boy that he once was. When they arrived at Hogwarts, the students realized that they needed to do something, and Neville, the person who struggled the most during the original DA lessons, took charge, and he along with Luna Lovegood and Ginny Weasley revived Dumbledore's army. Harry, Ron, and Hermione were not the only ones that the group was missing, as Dean Thomas, Justin Finch Fletchley, and Colin and Dennis Creevy were forced to go on the run because of their blood status. The rest of the group, minus those that had graduated from Hogwarts, all showed up, forming a pretty strong alliance of about 20 people. During the school year, the Cairo siblings spread propaganda around the school saying awful things about muggles and muggle-borns. Electo Caro taught muggle studies, and she went on about how muggles are like animals, stupid and dirty. Snape made sure to seal off all seven passageways in and out of the castle that the Marauder's map showed, each one having curses at their entrances and Death Eaters and Dementors at their exits. On top of that, Amicus Carol taught students the Dark Arts, and both siblings were in charge of punishment, and they took this to another level, sometimes even using the illegal Cruciatus Curse or Torturing Curse on them. The revived DA rebelled against the new authority and did all they could to backtrack the Carol's propaganda about muggles and muggleborns and protect kids from getting punishments from them. One day, the Carol's ordered Neville to use the Cruciatus Curse on younger students, but he refused, saying no right to their face. This of course led to a severe physical punishment for Neville. He got another punishment when he asked Electo Caro in class how much muggle blood she and her brother have. Despite getting beaten very often, Neville did not care, because reviving the DA gave him new confidence that he had never felt before, and he took over Harry's role as leader. He realized that it didn't just help him when he stood up to the Caros, but it gave others hope. And this was something he learned from Harry when he used to stand up to Umbridge or Snape. Neville based everything he did on Harry, and always asked what would Harry do, because when the DA first started, Harry always believed in him, and Neville took on Harry's role very proudly, because he always looked up to him. There was a lot of talk in the group that Harry was just on the run and that he wasn't doing anything, but Neville discouraged this talk, knowing that Harry was up to something big. Neville kept telling Seamus and the others that Harry would return to Hogwarts, but Seamus was doubtful. The three leaders of the group, and those closest to Harry, Neville, Luna, and Ginny, attempted to help Harry by stealing the Sword of Gryffindor, because while at the Burrow the previous summer, Ginny had heard that Dumbledore had left him the sword in his will, but the minister refused to give it to him. They broke into Snape's office, the office that was previously Dumbledore's, and they smashed open the glass case that held the sword. As they were trying to smuggle it down the staircase though, Snape caught them and he punished them. Luckily, it wasn't a severe punishment at all, as he merely sent them into the Forbidden Forest to do some work for Hagrid, who all three of them were obviously good friends with. While in the forest, the three of them had a good laugh as they fulfilled their punishment. While that punishment was tame, there were many that were not. A good way into the school year, Neville looked dreadful, one of his eyes being swollen yellow and purple. He had gouge marks on his face, and he looked like he had been living rough. The worst part was that Seamus and a few others looked even worse than him, clearly showing that being part of the DA led to some brutal beatings. 
The DA coins continued to do their job well, sending secret messages around the school, and it allowed Gryffindor to team up with members from other houses. They would send messages to them about sneaking out at night, and they would graffiti things on the wall saying things like, Dumbledore's army still recruiting. This became more and more difficult, however, especially after Neville lost his two other leaders, Luna and Ginny. Luna was kidnapped off the Hogwarts Express when she was going home for Christmas break, as their father had been very outspoken about his support for Harry, and his daughter being kidnapped was his punishment. Ginny was also forced to go into hiding with her family after Ron was identified to be with Harry and Hermione while they were in Malfoy Manor. One day when Terry Boot excitedly yelled about Harry, Ron, and Hermione breaking into Gringotts and escaping on a dragon, he was beaten by the Karos for spreading anything positive about Potter. The Karos guessed that Neville was behind a lot of what the DA was doing, and they went after him hard. They punished him even worse than before, but Neville did not back down. The rest of the DA did end up backing down, however, after Michael Corner got tortured really badly as he was caught releasing a first year that the Karos had chained up. This scared the others, not wanting to have the Cruciatus curse used on them the way it was on Michael. Neville realized that he could not ask people to go through what Michael did, so he dropped those kinds of stunts, but he ensured that they were still fighting by doing things underground. This infuriated the Karos, and they decided that the only way to stop Neville was to go after his grandmother. Neville later got a letter from his gran, and it turned out that she had hurt the Death Eater sent after her so badly that he was admitted to St. Mungo's Hospital for weeks, and Neville's grandmother went on the run. In the letter, she told Neville that she was proud of him, and that he really was his parents' son, both of whom were Aurors who fought dark wizards, and she told him to keep it up. Seeing that they had no hold over Neville, the Karos decided that Hogwarts could do without him. It's unclear if they planned to kill him or just send him to Azkaban, but either way, Neville knew it was time to disappear. As the Karos were chasing him, he knew he had one chance for a hideout, and he managed to get to the Room of Requirement, the place where Dumbledore's army began, for a place to lay low. While in there, he got really hungry, and wishing for something to eat, the room provided him a passage to the Hog's Head in Hogsmeade in the shape of a painting of a young girl, who was the owner, Aberforth's sister. He went through and met Aberforth, and he provided Neville and later many other DA members food. Slowly, more of the DA arrived and joined Neville, and as they did, the room expanded. The room turned into exactly what they needed. It was enormous, it had many multicolored hammocks, it was windowless, and the walls were covered in bright tapestry hangings that depicted three of the four house mascots, missing only Slytherin. When girls arrived, it made co-ed bathrooms, there were bulging bookcases, a few broomsticks, and in the corner, a large wooden cased wireless. The wireless was used for the greatest entertainment and inspiration, as they used it to listen to Potter Watch, a radio show made for the rebels and that kept listeners up to date with what was going on. To the relief of the DA, they got a message from Luna through the DA coin saying that she was alright, as she had been rescued from Malfoy Manor by Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and she also said that Dean Thomas was rescued with her as well, which relieved Seamus very much, as Dean was his best friend. After about two weeks of living in the room, there were about 20 people in there, and they all got a thrill when Harry, Ron, and Hermione returned to Hogwarts, just as Neville had said. They were all ready to help in the fight, and this ultimately led to the Battle of Hogwarts, the battle where it was all or nothing. More and more former members that had left Hogwarts came in through the Hog's Head, like Fred and George Weasley, Cho Chang, Alicia Spinett, Katie Bell, Angelina Johnson, Lee Jordan, and many others. The DA members were a prominent part in the fight, especially Neville, who destroyed Voldemort's final horcrux, killing a snake Nagini. However, a few DA members lost their lives during the battle. Colin Creevy, Lavender Brown, and former member Fred Weasley. Though the fight was finally over, the DA was not forgotten. The members of the DA held onto their coins, preserving them as badges of honor. They were also given special permission by the new Minister of Magic, Kingsley Shacklebolt, to become an Auror without the usual difficult qualifications if they chose to. Harry, Ron, and Neville all took this up, but Ron and Neville only did this temporarily, as Neville went on to teach Herbology at Hogwarts, and Ron decided to help George run the joke shop. The group had a book written about them by Rita Skeeter titled Dumbledore's Army, The Dark Side of the D-Mob, which according to her description, focused on their imperfections. Either way, Dumbledore's army went down in history as some of the bravest souls Hogwarts has ever seen. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and see more of this little dude. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Movie Flame updates. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured in the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you press that like button and subscribe, and look out for more great videos on the way.